Are you sitting comfortably? Morris had a problem. He had no sense of humour. If anyone made a joke about him, he sulked for days. This was unfortunate because Sparky's favourite game was to see how many tricks he could play on Morris before Morris realised he was being teased. One day Morris was dozily flying in the sunshine with one eye open for a fishy snack when someone's sharp nose rudely poked him in the ribs. It was Sparky, puffing and panting as if he'd been flying for hours on his fat little wings. Morris, he called out, do slow down. I've been trying to find you all morning. I've got some exciting news. Clarice and I have discovered magic mud. Magic mud? Morris dipped one wing and banked towards Sparky. What sort of magic mud? Does it grow a nice fat cod or maybe it sings when you can't get to sleep? No, no, nothing like that. It's beautiful in mud, Sparky exclaimed. What are you talking about? If you wallow in it and let it dry, then when it cracks off, your scales are all shiny and sparkly. Now Morris's other problem was that he was vain. His scales were always dull and rough, as if he'd been cave crawling with Clarice. He used loads of scale polish, but it did no good. Morris thought hard. He didn't trust Sparky, but he daren't miss the very slim chance that for once he might be telling the truth. Morris flapped his wings and slowed a little. So how does beautifling mud work? He asked carefully, not wishing to sound too interested. The only way Sparky could keep himself from giggling and going purple was to look really excited. Who cares? What does it matter? It just makes you beautifuler. Come and see. Then jiggling up and down with glee, the naughty dragon flew away. And Morris couldn't help but follow him to where a shallow river shimmered into the sea. There the slimy water oozed its way between a few hillocks of rough grass. A great place for wading birds and a very bad place for dragons. At last Sparky nudged Morris's tail. Look, down there, it's Clarice. Basking in the sun at the edge of a muddy island was Clarice. Her blue-green scales gleamed as if she'd been oiling them for days, and when she waved, her silver claws flashed and caught the light. As Morris and Sparky approached, she stretched her wings to show off their delicate webs. Oh, exclaimed Morris, wheeling into land, you're beautiful. Clarice, who really didn't care two hoots about her looks, put her head on one side and smiled. Thank you, Morris. Why don't you try the mud? It's lovely and cool. It'll make your scales just like mine. Morris landed next to Clarice and narrowed his ruby eyes. Was that a giggle playing at the corners of her mouth? She wasn't looking him straight in the eye. Or was it because the sun was too bright? He flicked out his tongue and tasted the mud on the ground. It was sour and greasy. Could it really have made her, sh her scales so shiny and colourful? There wasn't a trace of slime on her. He wasn't sure. Slowly he walked around Clarice inspecting her carefully. Sparky, who was aching with the effort of not laughing, sat and watched. At last Morris perched near the edge of the mud and dangled the tip of his tail into the stinking black sludge. Ugh, he squealed, whipping his tail back. I don't believe you, this is horrid stuff, I'm going home. Ooze dripped everywhere as he clambered to his feet. His claws slipped with a pitiful howl. He tumbled down the rocks into the stinking gunge below. Slop, slurp, splat. Terrified, Morris floundered wildly. Splashes of mud smothered Clarice and Sparky from head to claw. Yuck, stop it, they screamed in disgust. Then out from the slime oozed a greeny, blackish shape. Slowly and nastily, it slithered up the shore. From under the dripping goo, Morris's angry red eyes glowered at Clarice and Sparky. The two little dragons were not laughing now. 
Slowly, they backed away from the terrible monster that was coming to get them. But they weren't fast enough. Suddenly, Morris bellowed and shook himself hard, splattering mud everywhere. It trickled down snouts into eyes, over tongues and along backs. Now all three of them were cold, wet and miserable. But worst of all, the mud was all over their wings. Now dragons can only fly if their wings are kept absolutely clean. If the webs are torn or wet, flight is difficult, but if they get muddy, it's impossible. At first, the three dragons stared at each other in silent rage. Now look what you've done, muttered Morris, snorting enormous green bubbles through his nose as he spoke. You're the clumsy oaf, roared Clarice. How did we know you'd dance around like a hippo? It's not our fault you fell in. But you were trying to get me in, weren't you? Morris took a threatening step towards the others. Not really, no. She kept her claws crossed because she was lying. I've a good mind to push you two right in and hold you under for a week, roared Morris, although he was trying really hard not to cry. Round and round they went, shouting and stamping, until the wind began to cool and the sun to redden and sink in the west. It'll be dark soon, Sparky said. Hadn't we better get back? If we keep on like this, we'll be stuck out here all night. The other two stopped arguing. You're right, Clarice replied. Let's find some clean water and get this muck off, then we'll be able to fly. Sulky and silent, the three dragons picked their way across the tussocky mudflats towards home. It was getting darker, and the incoming tide was sweeping towards them, but it was very muddy and no good for washing. At last, the dragons became stranded on a little reedy island with no hope of getting any further that night. There wasn't much room, but they were all too angry to snuggle up. Instead, they glared at each other miserably. Clarice was cross with Sparky for having thought up the daft idea in the first place, and she was irritated with Morris for spraying her with mud. Sparky was particularly angry with Clarice for insisting on going to the mud flats a very long way from home. Although Morris was furious with the other two, mostly he blamed himself for being stupid enough to having listened to Sparky and envied Clarice. It was a long, cold night. When the wind became really bitter, a few, I'm sorry's, were whispered and they curled up closer and felt warmer but not much. Rising water hissed through the reeds until there was so little room they had to let their tails dangle in icy wetness. Do you know what? asked Clarice at last. What? muttered an unhappy Morris. I can't decide if the dragon master is the first or last person I want to see right now. Me too, moaned Sparky. If he was here, everything would be all right, but when I do see him, I'll run and hide because of what we've been up to. There was silence. And then, from a little way off, a kindly voice spoke in the darkness. Please, make up your minds, young dragons. Do you want me or not? I'm freezing over here. Dragon master, they shouted, scrambling and slipping over each other. We do want you, we're here. The dragon master lit a glow of light on the end of his staff and he began to pick his way through the marshes towards them. Don't move. I'll come to you, he called out. Will someone lend me a tail? Clarice was nearest. She wriggled her backside as near to the water's edge as she dared and stretched out her tail towards him. We're so glad to see you. We've been so scared, she sobbed as he grabbed her scales. At last, the dragon master was next to them, stroking their necks. So, what's been going on? I've been looking for you three scallywags since sunset, he said quietly. All three of them started talking at once. Sparky was telling Morris, and Clarice was pretending, and then Morris fell in the mud. It's all my fault, admitted Clarice at last. I just can't help teasing Morris. But it was my idea, moaned Sparky. And I fell for the stupid trick because I get worried about my looks, groaned Morris. 
And we're all very sorry and we're so glad to see you, added Clarice, nuzzling him with her nose. The Dragon Master scratched their ears. And I'm very glad I found you. It's dangerous to move from here tonight, so I'll stay with you until Ember and Flamethrower come for us in the morning. The tide has turned and the sky is getting lighter, so they won't be long now. The Dragon Master spread his cloak over their backs and organised their tails so they didn't get wet. And at long last, the little dragons stopped shivering. When dawn warmed the skies with red and silver, six dark dragon shapes appeared in the south. Everyone shouted, waving wings and tails until the dragon flight wheeled in, scooped up each of the miscreants in their claws and headed for home. It took hours of swimming in the sea and being rubbed down with Pumice's special soap weeds to get the muck mucky dragons clean. Even the dragon master had to have a bath, but he insisted on having a rock pool heated for him. He said he had had enough of cold water for a very long time. When all four had eaten breakfast by a roaring fire in Pumice's cave, the dragon master peered under his bushy eyebrows at Morris, Clarice and Sparky. They wriggled uncomfortably, waiting for the big telling off. There was a long silence, and then he said, That was a very dangerous prank. Sorry, they squeaked miserably. Hmm, I should think so too. And then he smiled. Now, go out and play, but be kinder to each other in future. Aren't you going to send us to our caves for a whole week? Morris asked timidly. I think you've all learned your lessons. Just don't be so silly again, any of you. Go on. Shoo! The Dragon Master laughed, clapping his hands. And with just the merest glance in a rock pool to see if his scales were tidy, Morris led the others out of the cave into the welcoming sunshine. And one by one, they stretched their sparkling wings and lifted gracefully up into the sky.